Hello, my name's Tom, and today I'm going to be talking about the Tingler. I was recommended this film by Barbara Lawrence about probably just over a year ago, and I've only just got around to watching it, but it was worth the wait because it's really, really good. It's directed by William Castle, who is sort of known for being the king of gimmicks. Um, he was the first one to give out sick bags to people going into the cinema and things like that. Starring Vincent Price. Uh, this film came out in 1959, same year as House on Haunted Hill. Um, another Vince, Vincent Price film that was also directed by William Castle. So those two men had quite a productive year. Famously in the cinema, when, uh, for House on Haunted Hill, they had a, a plastic skeleton drop down from the ceiling in the cinema. In this film, The Tingler, uh, famously they had electrical buzzers under some of the chairs in the audience. They would go off and give uh, audience members a little electric shock to make them scream and jump. I feel obligated to warn you that some of the sensations, some of the physical reactions which the actors on the screen will feel will also be experienced for the first time in motion picture history by certain members of this audience. And this film actually starts with William Castle introducing the film and warning you about it uh, and how terrifying it's going to be and how if you need to scream, don't, don't be embarrassed, just scream. A scream at the right time may save your life. And it's very reminiscent of the Universal films from the 30s, like uh, Frankenstein, where they had the, the guy coming on to introduce the film. Wilson, we've warned you. Uh, also quite Hitchcockian as well, because obviously he was in a lot of his own trailers and stuff. My name is Alfred Hitchcock. So basically, Vincent Price uh, plays a character called Warren, who is, uh, I guess, the main character. And he performs autopsies on the recently deceased, and that's sort of his job that he has to do. But he's also conducting secret scientific study into the psychology of terror and fear within humans, and he believes that um, terror can manifest itself so strongly it can kill you, because he studies people who, who he feels have been scared to death. Uh, he thinks something physical appears at the moment of death that is caused by fear and they don't know what this is and so they give it a name which is the tingler uh, and he works with an, a fellow scientist called david warren has a wife called isabel and isabel's sister whose name is lucy um isabel's sister sister lucy is married to david who warren works with so that's how they all know each other. Isabel is sort of quite early on is painted as the villain because she won't share her inherited money with her sister, even though it's rightfully hers as well or something like that. And um, she doesn't like David because he's too common or something and doesn't think that his her sister should marry David. And she doesn't respect her husband's work and instead goes off partying and cohorting with other men and basically... Basically, it's the whole adulterous wife thing, which I think was more of a big deal back in those days than it is now. But I think it's still clear that, yeah, we're not we're meant to not like her. It's also implied that she poisoned her father in order to get the inheritance in the first place, which suggests, oh, she's capable of murder. It's a lot like House on Haunted Hill, actually, because you sort of feel like, oh, she could kill him at any point. And, you know, every drink she hands to him, you think, oh, has that got poison in? There's this other character. He's a real creep. And he comes to the autopsy of his wife's brother at the beginning of the film, and that's how he meets Warren. And it's never really explained why he's there to watch an autopsy. But for some reason, Vince Price doesn't think that that's odd at all, that he would want to come and watch this autopsy. And he sort of gets along with him, and they, they form a little friendship, and... And then he meets this guy's wife, who is deaf and mute. And then we f we we're introduced to the idea that if someone's mute, they can't scream when they're scared. He believed that believes that his wife faints when she's scared, but Warren tells him that no, it's a psychosomatic blackout induced by the fact that she can't scream, so there's no outlet for her fear, so she has to just shut down. David is the first person to bring up the idea of, well, what if you could keep her awake? What would happen, you know, and would this tingler manifest itself? And there's almost a clinical scientific 
sadistic edge to some of the stuff that they're contemplating doing, but they're just talking about it, you know. But you kind of think, oh, okay, there's a bit of mad science type stuff going on here. Vincent Price decides to terrify his wife, so he pulls a gun on her and threatens her and says he's going to kill her and all. And it, it's this quite dramatic, quite nasty scene. And then she screams with terror and faints. And as soon as she faints, he gets the X-ray out and scans it, and they find the tingler, which is this creature, and like a like a millipede all the way up the spine a physical manifestation of fear, this creature. Which is a great idea. It's a really good premise for a horror film. We then learn about this drug, which is an acid, uh, which uh, Vincent Price injects himself with to make himself scared, to give him nightmares. He tries not to scream, but he can't help it. And he screams and that kills the tingler. So they don't manage to get um, a sensation of what the tingler is like from that experiment. He remembers his friend who he met and his wife who is a mute who can't scream and he decides to trust the drug on her. And this is where, up till now, Vincent Price has been fairly charming, apart from the bit where he pulled the gun out and tried to scare his wife. This is the bit where he, he, he you think, oh, okay, so he's actually not very nice after all. He's, he's, he's kind of a bit evil, you know, because <laughs> he's gonna uh, inject this drug into this poor, mute deaf woman so that she gets really scared and produces a tingler. Yeah, there's a real grim and nasty nastiness to this film as well. Just the fact that it starts with an autopsy taking place is, is sort of sets the tone rather well. And then this woman has this horrible trip in which she sees all these horrible things and you sort of assume it's hallucinations brought on by the acid. Um, but it's this creepy guy with a horrible face and a knife and uh, um, and then something amazing happens. The film, which is in black and white, suddenly she turns the taps and bright red blood comes out of the taps. Which is really quite shocking because you're watching a black and white film. And so it's like, whoa, red. <laughs> um, and then there's a whole bathtub full of red blood as well. I don't know if this is the first time that had been done because it's quite iconic now the whole red on black and white you see that a lot in advert advertising and stuff and a lot of people think that it comes from Schindler's List uh, the film but obviously here's a much earlier example 1959 and it's it's the same thing um, I guess they would have had to hand color the film I'm guessing it's it's really effective and quite startling really later in the film we realize that the mute woman's husband, Ollie, that's his name, Ollie, is the one who dressed up as the monster with the knife and tried to scare her to kill her because he wanted rid of her. And so we think, oh, so it was him all along. And we forget that actually Vincent Price's character, as charming as he is, he still drugged her with this acid. So he's as much to blame for her death as her husband is. But by the end of the film, that's almost forgotten. It's not dealt with, you know, because, and, and, and by the end, Vincent Price is still lovely and charming and kind, and he does the right thing, and he says, oh, you shouldn't have murdered your wife. It's, it's a, it's a, it was the wrong thing to do. I'm gonna have to call the police and all of that. And you, but you did it. You helped kill her. You know, you, and, and the film, it's almost like you're meant to forget that Vincent Price helped kill this woman. There's a real ambiguity in the film as to whether Warren, Vincent Price's character, is a good person or a bad person. And I think maybe that's just up to people to make their own mind up whether he becomes a good person by the end and he does the right thing. They do manage to produce a tingler anyway from this woman who's died and uh, the tingler latches onto people, kills them unless they scream and if they scream it incapacitates the tingler. And this is where you get this great scene where it, it escapes into the cinema. And Vincent Price is talking to the people in the cinema in the film, but he's also talking to you, the audience, who are in the cinema, obviously, because it would have been in the cinema. And there's bits where they turn the lights out and the screen goes black, and then you hear Vincent Price going, um, all of you in your cinema seats, watch out, the tingler is loose. And he's talking to the audience. And he goes, if you feel it, don't forget to scream. And then at that point, some of the audience members watching that film at the time would have had 
their uh, minor electric shocks from the chairs they were sitting on and were going ah, and jumped and screamed and it would have been it, utter hysteria would have ensued during those moments um it's, it's great to try and imagine what that would have been like in the cinema for people watching that film um chaos such good fun though i'm sure the film they're watching is a silent film which it keeps cutting to quite a lot of so they must i guess they must have had the rights to show this film and they thought oh let's just show quite a bit of it you know um but there's a wonderful scene where the the, the film's you know being projected but then there's like a celluloid jam suddenly the tingler crosses over across the projection the, the uh, over the projector uh, and that's just great. It's, it's brilliant, brilliant scene. You could argue that the Tingler looks a little bit silly, um, but actually, because the whole stuff about the pathology and and psychology of fear and and all of, it's all done very well and very convincingly up to that point, and and it and it really builds a picture of how horrible this thing is. By the time it really appears in the film you're already very scared of it. Um, and so there's a real horrible tension. And the film, again, because it's William Castle loves his gimmicks, uh, you know, so, you know, um, as well as drawing attention to you, the audience, and making you part of the film, what it also does is it, it uses a heartbeat. Um, that's one thing. So whenever the tingler's around, and when it, it's go and it moves slowly across the floor, it crawls, and it's going after Vincent Price. It's going after the people in the cinema, and you can hear this do -do 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 heart beating <laughs> over it to make you feel nervous, you know. Uh, and it works. It works. It makes you feel really nervous. <laughs> Isabel. It's a bit. I wouldn't say it's unresolved, but Isabel. Uh, Vincent Price's wife tries to kill him by unleashing the tingler on him, and then he manages to someone they manage to scream and incapacitate the tingler, and then she Isabel's never seen again. She's like, oh, she packed and left. There's a line about that, and then that's it. You know, that's fair enough. Basically, by the end, like, oh, she's gone, so she she didn't get her comeuppance, as it were. But then neither did Vincent Price for having drugged that lady. So everyone sort of gets off scot-free. Oh, that's great. The only way to kill the Tingler, because it's indestructible, is to place it back within the corpse of the dead woman, because that was the body it was host to. And because that body's not feeling any fear anymore, the Tingler will diminish or disappear or die or what it, wherever it came from, etc., is the theory. So Vincent Price puts this creature inside the dead body of this woman and then goes out to call the police uh, on her husband, who we know murdered her. Basically, we kind of discover, I guess, that it didn't work, that you can't just put a fully formed tingler back into a dead body, that that's maybe not enough, because what happens... And this is a real big spoiler. I mean, I've already spoiled this film, really, anyway. There is a spoiler warning at the start. But the ending, basically, here it comes. The corpse sits up, and they're just staring at these dead eyes. And the husband's terrified, screaming, and you, and, the, and that's how it ends. So, you're, so the implication there is that he probably has been scared to death by the woman who he's scared to death. Um, and she's dead, so her body is being animated by the Tingler. So the Tingler is still scaring people, but using the body as a vessel to do it now. Very, very good. Very, very fun film, because of the gimmicks work. They're good gimmicks. You know, the, the whole, it's loose in the cinema, the lights have gone out, the heartbeat, the red blood in the taps, all of those gimmick, uh, visual gimmicks work really well and make it a lot of fun. But it's also scary, creepy. There's something about it, especially in the first half of the film before the Tingler appears. Not that the Tingler's not scary, but I think the build-up to the Tingler is scarier, almost, because it's just the concept. And obviously Vincent Price does a wonderful job. I always say he's a... I've said in the past that he's quite camp and pompous and, you know, but he actually can play straight quite well as 
when he wants to, I think. Um, and this film isn't a really, really serious film. A little bit more fun and camp and gimmicky, but it's no less scary. It's a frightening film. If you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend it, although I have spoilt it for you now. <laughs> but yeah, The Tingler.